In the video on classification with the auto model feature, we introduced the tool and its usage in conjunction with a classification use case. The same predict task functionality can be used for your regression problems as well. That is, when the target values are numerical. This tutorial introduces the other two options for using it, and they are clustering and outlier detection. Together with classification, they are the main tasks solved with machine learning. For this demo, we will again use a dataset that is shipped with the AI Studio. Of course, you can also load or import your own datasets. The dataset is called Sonar. Sonar stands for Sound Navigation and Ranging, and is a technique used mostly underwater or for geo-exploration. The technology is as simple as emitting an acoustic signal and then interpreting the returned echo for duration and characteristics. The sonar example set data are sonar returns collected from a metal cylinder and a cylindrical shaped rock on a sandy ocean floor. We have a total of 208 return signals, each of which is described with 60 different data points representing the response amplitude of a certain frequency band. The original idea of the experiment was to identify the different objects by applying a neural network model for classification. The classification was then given as rock versus mine, originally called a metal cylinder. However, classification is not our task in this tutorial, but we want to find some clusters in our data. All attributes or columns are now checked to see if they are acceptable for our usage, and the result is indicated with a traffic light color. To understand the colors and the quality bars in more detail, please refer to the information panel and the auto model and classification video. As you can see here from a pure data quality and applicability perspective, the data of our label could also be used for clustering, but we will exclude it as this is a known label. Typically in clustering problems, we would not already have a known label. Now we are presented with the option to configure the general overview and the configurations for two different clustering algorithms. K means clustering always requires the input of how many clusters are to be formed up front. Here, we select K equals 3. Check out 5 minutes with Ingo on our YouTube channel to get a great explanation of how K means clustering works. Of course, there are also some additional details in the information panel. X means allows us to simply define an upper and lower limit for the number of clusters. The default is set from 2 to 20, which accommodates a large number of clusters so we can keep that as well. So, we can first look at the correlations. As you can see, there are close correlations between the attributes for the apparent reason that they are adjacent frequency bands and, as such, are not independent. Further, you get a nice overview of the results of each clustering method. For k-means, we have clustered the data into three clusters, cluster 0, cluster 1, and cluster 2. Cluster 0 contains 84 out of the 208 examples, which is a bit more than 40% of all examples. The characteristics of the clusters are shown here. For example, cluster 0 is prominently below average in these three attributes. Clusters 1 and 2 both have values significantly above average in three dominant attributes. The same is apparent here again in the heat map, which shows all the nine attributes mentioned before, with red indicating values above and green below average. You can also look at the clustering as a decision tree. It shows that clusters 0 and 2 were formed around these relatively clear paths, whereas cluster 1 basically consists of the remainder. For the rest, let's jump to the results of the x-means algorithm. Here, you can look at the centroid chart to see the average characteristics across all attributes. And of course, we also provide the data for those centroids. The scatterplot tab shows a two-dimensional representation using the two most discriminatory attributes. Cluster 2, for example, has strong characteristics in attributes 45 and 46, and you can see the points are nicely congregating around here. Last but not least, we show here the main result of the clustering, which is the cluster data. Now, we will use the same data to identify if we have any outliers. In our case, this might be for cases with bad signal recording. We could then remove those upon identification and redo the clustering for a better result. For consistency, I will uncheck the class again. We have discussed it before, so I will turn off the correlations this time. With our small example set, we can increase the percentage here a bit to 2. And here, you see the output for each of our two outlier detection methods as flags. And here, 
even with the absolute values. You can now investigate the ones that are indicated. As always, if you want to edit the underlying process, you can do that just by opening it here. You now have all the different steps displayed and annotated nicely, so you can swiftly find your way around to check and change as you please. With this, we end this tutorial on clustering and outlier detection with the auto model feature. Thank you very much for watching.